Mazda Kavian here from Studio MMA and MMA Knit. We are standing here with the European UFC president, Marshall. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Nice to see you. Is that right? European president for UFC? Yeah, I'm actually embarrassed to say the president of the UK division, but also the managing director for the international development for the UFC. So I oversee uh, the business around the world, not just Europe, but I'm fine with Europe president. That's good too. <laughs> How is it having UFC in Birmingham? It's great. You know, we worked very hard to bring this fight to the fans. You know, the fans uh, in the UK and Europe were screaming for a UFC event. We had uh, some challenges in getting the event here. Uh, it ultimately worked out. So to be here now talking to you and seeing the press here, uh, it's a great feeling. I think everyone within the company is, is really excited to be back. What was the challenges? Well, we had a, um, as we were planning, I think the initially we had thought that this would be an October show and then our television date moved in the US and so then we had to scramble to find a date and the venues here in Europe and the UK are very busy you know there aren't there aren't a, a number of big venues that we can use for our event and when the date shifted we couldn't find a venue uh, and we really thought we were dead in the water we didn't think we'd be able to bring the event here and then through some hard work of the group uh, here in the UK our office here and the venue with the LG Arena we were able to massage an event into the schedule and so we've done it and all the reports are that things are going great. The fans came out to support it, so it's for us, it's great. You seem to have a television rights problem here in uh, Europe. Why don't you start our own TV channel? Well, you know, the rumors were in the U.S. We were looking to launch a channel uh, before the Fox deal was announced. We're always looking at that option. It's something uh, we think there's an appetite for it. Um, is it. Is the market ready for it? I don't know. We, we need to do a little more research on it. Uh, in certain parts of the world, certainly in Scandinavia, in the UK, um, I think in France and other parts of Europe, we have a huge, huge following and probably could launch a channel or be associated with a channel. The, the key for us right now in our UK business is making sure that all of our fights are available to our fans and we're going to continue to evaluate all options. I mean, in Sweden, it's uh, pretty hard to watch UFC and uh, there must be a better solution to fix that problem and uh, my idea was to start a new channel UFC channel that would be I mean that would solve all the problems at least in Scandinavia yes look the, the, the interesting thing is I, I've heard that before about some of the challenges in Scandinavia to see our programming is it is time and time again Scandinavia is one of the top web generators for us in terms of traffic the fans are finding it, you know, it, it concerns me that they may be <laughs> illegally downloading it. I hope that's not the case, but, you know, in some ways it's flattering that they want the content. If we could figure out the business of putting a, a network together and get it distributed, you know, it's not as easy as building a channel. Then you have to go get it distributed, you have to do the deals. It's a bit of a knife fight to make all that happen. Uh, but we're committed to figuring out a strategy that works for every country. and. Um, you know, the conversations I've had this weekend about Scandinavia, we're going to look at that and see what, you know, makes more sense for our fans. How come UFC is getting so much bigger in Scandinavia? I know we are helping, but I don't think we help that much. I don't get it. Um, you know, it's, it's a phenomenon. I've never lived in Scandinavia. I know plenty of uh, people from that region of the world. And I think what it is, is they like competition. You know, in the UFC, at least the way we deliver MMA, it's the purest form of competition. There's no bullshit. The guys are in there fighting. They've trained their ass off. It shows in their bodies and their physiques and the way they, and I think the uh, people from Scandinavia appreciate that level of competition. Um, I mean, that's, that's all I can chalk it up to. I mean, you know, and I do think that there's a, a lot of practitioners in the market. You know, they're not necessarily professionals, but there are a lot of people who are training martial arts, so they have a really good appreciation for how difficult it is to do what these guys do. So you don't think it has nothing to do that Swedish people are related to the Vikings? <laughs> actually, I hadn't thought about that, but it could have a lot to do with that, actually. In fact, I'd like to amend my answer to say that it has everything to do with the Vikings. <laughs> <laughs> So what do you think about uh, Saturday's fights? Any predictions? Um, look, you know, losing the Paul Taylor fight was a big blow um, for us, but uh, there are so many great fights, you know, that um, the fight was, um, the, the fight card top to bottom has, and this is what the UFC does best, they're meaningful fights, they're competitive fights. I was with Joe Silva and uh, Sean Shelby at breakfast this morning, we were talking, and you know, this Levin Munoz fight is going to be a war. And, Brad Pickett is in for a tough, tough fight. 
um, against Hanan. So I, I don't know where any of these fights will go. There's a couple of candidates for fight of the night. Uh, but the one thing I'm sure of is that every time the fans complain that they don't like the card, the card ends up blowing them away and everyone eats their words and says, shit, you know, why do we complain? This was a great night of fights. So I'm confident something like that will happen again. It usually happens. It usually does, yeah. What do you think about the Swedish fighter, Papi Abedi? 8-0 in record, first fight in the UFC? Well, I think what's going to be interesting with him is to see if he gets the UFC jitters. You know, a lot of times guys come in and their whole game plan goes out the window. They get this I think big. He, still ha he has it. Yeah, yeah. I think he will. And I think when he gets in there and he hears the crowd, hopefully he can take a deep breath and control sort of that adrenaline dump. Um, and if he can, I think he's got all the skills to be very successful here. But uh, the UFC does interesting things to fighters. When they get in the octagon and they have 10,000 or more people, at least here in this event, screaming, you know strange things happen so I'm looking forward to that fight and to see how he performs I would walk straight out what would you do um, yeah I probably would stay in the parking lot <laughs> now, now to Sweden I know there's rumors that UFC is coming to uh, Sweden uh, sometimes in March or April uh, could you tell us anything or is it you, you want the scoop we, yeah. are, we are definitely looking to be in Sweden before the end, before the middle of the year. We haven't pegged the date yet. Um, we've done an inspection of the Globe Arena. We've looked at all. We've done all the groundwork to be able to bring an event to Sweden. I'm confident we'll get an event to Sweden, but I don't have any um, uh, date to confirm it. And you know us; we don't usually announce a date until everything's locked in. So until that happens, it would be. Um, uh, somewhat foolish to announce it, but we're committed to coming there. We want to be there. Lorenzo and Dana want to be there, and I would expect us to be there. In all the countries in Scandinavia, why Sweden? You know, it seems to be a hotbed of MMA. There are MMA promotions going on there. Um, we love the Globe Arena. Um, we have a very good relationship with AEG. Um, it's an AEG-run venue. Uh, it's, I think, in our in our sense of you know being foreigners in some way, it's the right um, arena to launch in. It's the right city to launch in, in Stockholm. It sets the right message for that region of the world. Um, so to us, it, it feels like, and maybe this is ignorant, but to us, it feels like you know that's sort of the um, the heartbeat of Scandinavia is to be there, and that's where we want to do it. So on the Swedish card, do you know how many Swedish fighters there will be? No, I don't. I, don't I, I would imagine even if we asked Joe Silva, he wouldn't know. Joe will put it together. He did say to me this morning there are a couple of really good Swedes he's looking at. Um, so I suspect that means a couple of guys he hasn't signed. So I would expect us to make some signings once that fight's um, locked in. But there are a couple of Swedish fighters here. Reza Madadi, Sirvan Kakai. And these guys are top-level Swedish fighters. Yeah, well, let's, let's make sure Joe meets them. <laughs> yeah, I think he had. I I introduced them both. So. Yeah, I'm sure Joe was probably aware of them anyway. But um, that's the beauty of the way the business runs. You know, the having someone like Joe Silva and Sean Shelby who know the fight game and know the fighters, they're going to find the best guys. The, the reason why I asked how many Swedish fighters will be in the Swedish card is because of this card. There's a lot of Englishmen. Yeah. I mean, not all the fights, but the majority. Yeah, yeah. Would that be possible to do that in Sweden? Based on what I'm hearing, there are plenty of good fighters there. Would we stack the card that way? You don't get to fight in the UFC just because you're a particular nationality and we're there. You have to fight. Um, you know, our event we last did in Rio, I think every fight had a Brazilian in it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it did. One. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, and I know that when we were in Australia, we signed a couple of Australian fighters. We fought, we've signed someone from New Zealand. I would expect us to make some signings, but would every card have a um, Swede in it? If they do, that means they were worthy of being in the UFC, but I don't know. Because I was thinking, will you take fighters from Finland? Because MMA is really big in Finland, Finn fight. Uh, Denmark, Norway, we have uh, Einemu. Yep. He's a... Yeah, uh, he has a UFC contract. Yes. It would be nice to see him. Of course, yeah, it would be. And all those countries you mentioned are on the list. It'd be, you know, one of the things that we've learned in our development is how important each country's nationalism is and the region, sorry, and the regionality um, that's important and the, um, uh, the competitiveness between the countries. So you can bet that Joe will be looking at that. And if there's a match that makes sense that might pit two countries from Scandinavia against each other, he'll do it. So hopefully next time I interview you, it will be in Sweden. It'll be to give you the scoop that we're coming to Sweden. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. Thanks for the support. Really appreciate it. Thank you.